Good morning everyone, good morning class. This is your Sir Bits at your service and welcome to Bits Academy. Hello students, pag-usapan natin ngayon ang scalar at vector quantities. In physics kasi, gumagamit tayo ng mga symbols to represent quantities. Like for example, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, time, mass. And itong mga quantities na to, pwede siyang maging scalar or vector quantities. Ngayon, alamin natin, ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng scalar sa vector quantities? Unahin natin sa kanilang definition. By definition kasi, scalar quantity is defined as the physical quantity with magnitude only. While, vector quantity is defined as the physical quantity that has direction and magnitude. So, dun pa lang sa kanilang definition, makikita na natin yung pinagkaiba nila. Si scalar, magnitude lang. Si vector, magnitude plus direction. Ano ba yung magnitude? Yung magnitude is yun, yun yung mga numerical value na nagde-describe doon sa certain quantity or yun yung size ng quantity. So, i-compare naman natin sila sa kanilang mga example. Gaya ng mga sinabi kong quantities kanina, isa-isa yun natin. Distance. Pag sinabi natin distance, yun yung actual part travel o yun yung length ng actual path travel. So, dahil length lang siya, regardless the direction, wala siyang direction, so yung distance is a scalar quantity. While, displacement, kung sinabi natin displacement, it is the length and the direction of the change in position. Okay? Meron siyang length, meron siyang direction. So, ibig sabihin, meron siyang magnitude plus direction. Anong quantity yun? Tama, vector quantity. Pangalawang example, si speed at si velocity. Si speed. Ito yung tumutukoy kung gaano kabilis yung isang bagay. So, dahil tinutukoy niya lang gaano kabilis yung isang bagay, speed is a scalar quantity. While, velocity, yun yung speed na may direction. So, ibig sabihin, si velocity, siya si vector quantity. And so on, sa iba pang mga example, yung acceleration, meron tayong magnitude, may direction. So, ibig sabihin, siya ay vector quantity. Si mass, wala siyang direction, mass lang siya. So, siya ay uh, <coughs> scalar quantity. Pag sinabi, ng, pag sinabi naman nating weight, weight, siya rin yung tinatawag natin gravitational force. Meron siyang direction, pababa. So, siya ay vector quantity. Sino pa? Uh, time. Yung oras ba natin? Meron bang direction? Walang direction ang oras natin. So, time is a scalar quantity. And, marami pa. So, now, i-compare naman natin sila pagdating sa mga computations. Yung scalar quantity, ginagamitan lang siya ng mga basic operations like addition. For example na lang, ang distance at saka displacement. So, si distance, kukunin lang natin yung actual path. Sabi ko nga kanina, actual path travel. So, kahit lumikuliko siya dyan, wala tayong pakialam dun sa direction kasi distance lang tayo eh. Distance lang yung inahanap. Pag distance ang inahanap, so yung actual path travel. Unlike doon sa displacement is the change in position. So, may pakialam tayo ngayon dun sa direction. So, kung if ever man, kunwari, nagsimula siya dun sa starting point, umikot siya, bumalik siya dun sa pinaka final point niya is same lang dun sa spot kung saan siya nagsimula. So, ang distance natin dun is yung kabuuan ng circle, yung, cir yung circumference ng circle, tapos yung displacement dun, dahil hindi naman siya nagbago dun sa kanyang initial position, same lang siya dun sa final position, so zero yung displacement. Mag-take tayo ng example. For example, katot ka ka, Gushon, and Kari start from the base. Katot ka ka went 4 kilometers north and then 3 kilometers west. Gushon went 6 kilometers east and Kari went around the circular path of diameter 2 kilometer. Determine the distance traveled 
and the displacement of each hero from the base. Okay? So, sasagutin natin, alamin natin ngayon, yung distance travel and the displacement of each hero. Si Katot Kaka, si Gushon, at si Kari. Okay, unahin natin dito kay Gatot Kaka. Si Gatot Kaka daw ay went 4 km north. So, umakyat siya ng 4 km. And then, 3 km west. So, west, 3 km west. Siguro naman marunong tayo nung sa direction, no? So, pataas yung north, pababa yung south, pakanan yung east, at pakaliwa yung west. Now, pangalawa na given ay si Bushon. So, lagyan natin dito si Gatot. Gatot na lang. Tapos si Gushon, si Gushon naman went 6 km east. So, pakanan siya ng 6 km. And lastly, si Kari ay went around the circular path of diameter 2 km. So, umikot lang siya. Tapos, may diameter tayo dito na 2 km para kay Kari. Ayan. So, unahin natin si Gatot. Distance ni Gatot. Sabi ko nga kanina, distance is just the length of the actual path travel. So, just add nung mga na-travel ni Gatot, which is yung 4 km at saka yung 3 km. So, 4 km plus 3 km is equal to 7 km. So, the distance of Gatot traveled is 7 km. How about the displacement? So, Gatot displacement. So, the displacement, ano nga is displacement? It is the length and the direction of the change in position. So, change in position, ito yung initial position ni Gatot mula dun sa base. Ayun. Final position niya, doon. So, kung papansinin natin, nakabuo tayo ngayon ng right triangle. So, may right triangle tayo, hinahanap natin ngayon yung kanyang displacement. At kung papansinin natin, doon sa right triangle natin, yung displacement niya, yun yung longest side ng right triangle na tinatawag nating hypotenuse. hypotenuse. Now, pwede tayong gumamit ng Pythagorean theorem. So, ano ba yung formula natin ng Pythagorean theorem? We have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C squared ay longest side, yun yung displacement na hinahanap natin. So, para matanggal yung square dun sa C, just square root both sides. So, square root ng C squared, then square root ng A natin, yung 4 kilometers squared, plus yung B natin is yung 3 kilometer squared. Okay? So, makakancel yung squared. Yung C natin is equal to square root ng 4 times 4, 16, plus 3 times 3, 9. So, 16 plus 9, we have 25 Square root ng 25 ay 5. So, we have 5 kilometers para sa displacement ni Gatot. Ngayon, guys, yung 5 kilometers, ano lang yun? Length lang yun ng displacement. Diba sabi natin kanina, displacement, yun yung length and direction. So, alamin natin ano yung direction ngayon ni Gatot. Para naman doon sa direction ni Gatot, so, kung mapapansin natin dito, nakabuo siya ng angle. So, given ang opposite, opposite ng angle at saka yung adjacent. Ito yung adjacent. So, ang opposite natin dito ay si 3 kilometers, ang adjacent natin ay si 4 kilometers. So, meron tayong opposite saka adjacent. In trigonometry, meron tayong tinatawag na sokatowa. So, sine Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Then tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So dahil given ang opposite, given ang adjacent, pwede tayong gumamit ng TOA. Which is tangent theta o yung angle is equal to 
opposite over adjacent. Ang opposite natin ay si 3 kilometers and we have adjacent na 4 kilometers. So, para makuha natin yung angle, mag inverse tangent tayo, theta is equal to inverse tangent ng 3 kilometer divided by 4 kilometer. So, makukuha natin yung angle ngayon. So, with the use of calculator, inverse tangent ng 3 over 4 is equal to 36.87 degrees. Now, yung angle, meron tayong angle, pero ano yung direction natin dyan? So, dahil ang reference natin, nagmula siya sa north, papuntang west. So, ibig sabihin, 36.87 west of north. Okay? So, for the tot displacement is equal to 5 kilometer, 36.87 degree west of north. So guys, huwag kayong malilito pagdating sa paglalagay ng direction. So tanda nyo lang, lagi nasa dulo yung reference. Reference which means doon siya nang galing. Like for example, nandito yung ating angle. So galing siya sa east, papuntang north. So ang tawag natin dyan ay north of east. Okay? Pag dito naman, galing siya sa north, papuntang east, east of north. Kabila, papuntang west naman, galing north, west of north. Pag galing west, papuntang north, north of west. Pag galing west, papuntang south, south of west. Pag galing south, papuntang west, west of south. Pag galing south, papuntang east, east of south. Pag galing east, papuntang south, south of east. Okay? Pero, kapag eto 45 degrees, nasa gitna siya ng east and south, ang tawag natin dyan ay south east. Ganun din, pag nasa gitna siya ng north and east, yung for, pag 45 degree tayo dyan, north east. Dito naman ay northwest. Dito naman ay southwest. And then syempre, alam na natin yan, ito yung north, ito yung east, ito yung west, ito yung south. So yan, pagdating sa paglalagay ng direction. Okay, doon naman tayo kay Gushon. Si Gushon daw, nagpunta siya ng 6 km east. Okay? So, pagdating sa distance ni Gushon, distance, Gushon, is equal to 6 km. Okay? Then, displacement ni Gushon, displacement, we have 6 km east. Ayan, wala naman siyang ibang pinuntahan. So, yung given sa kanya, yun na din yung kanyang displacement. Make sure, nandun pa rin yung direction. Okay, and lastly, si Kari, si Kari ay umikot lamang. So, Kari. Si Kari ay umikot. So, ibig sabihin, yung distance travel niya ay yung circumference ng no? circle. Kasi the actual path, length of the actual path. So, ano nga yung circumference ng circle formula, we have 2 pi r. Pero ang given natin is the diameter, which is 2 kilometer. So, para makuha natin yung radius, just divide the divide the diameter by 2. So, hahatiin lang natin yung diameter. Yun na yung radius natin. So, 1 kilometer. So, we have 2 pi times 1 kilometer for the distance ni Kari. So, distance distance Kari is equal to 2 pi. So, dalawang pi, we have 6.28. 6.28 kilometer. And for the displacement, dahil umikot na siya, bumalik lang din siya sa base, so we have 0 for the displacement ni Kari. So, yun ang pinagkaiba ng scalar sa vector quantity.
I hope by now nakuha niyo na yung pinakaiba ng scalar sa vector quantities in terms of their definition sa mga example at even sa calculations ng kanilang mga addition. And that's all for the scalar and vector quantities. Once again, this is your service at your service and class dismissed.